Hi, I'm Rob Cram, and today we're going to take a look at Criterion Games' Need for Speed Most Wanted, which is based on the 2006 release of the same name. Most Wanted kicks off in typical Criterion fashion, where players are thrust into a make-believe world where the cars are the people, as that's all you get to see in an almost Pixar Cars-like setup, except it's for grown-ups. What Most Wanted allows Criterion to do is bring their burnout style to the Need for Speed franchise. In a way, this is Need for Speed Burnout. The Most Wanted part comes from a very loose premise where players earn points, challenge a Most Wanted driver and work their way up to the top to become the Most Wanted. All the while avoiding the kamikaze police force. The fact that Criterion have ripped away all characterization from the game is interesting, but leaving behind the series trademark characters seems like a step backwards in some ways. Much like Burnout Paradise, players are given the open world to explore, the keys to the vehicles and are told to just get on with it. There's an easy to use interface where players can set destinations, choose races, select and customize vehicles but the entire satnav GPS style system ultimately goes against the rest of the game because eyes need to be on the road rather than looking at a small corner of the screen to navigate. This is more of an issue for those playing with larger screens. A voice system would have worked so much better here and reduced frustration from constantly hitting things. Most Wanted places players in a world full of obstacles, namely AI motorists who seem designed to impede progress whether you're just cruising, doing a checkpoint race or evading the cops. This is no mere bog standard racing game and coming from the Burnout series, Criterion wants its gamers to crash and crash often they will. There are neat crash visuals which add some drama to the game but there's often an overriding feeling that luck plays more of an important role than actual driving skill. On many a corner, an AI car will conveniently be travelling at 10 miles per hour just on your racing line and due to the blisteringly high speed, there's little time to move out the way. So players are treated to the same crash scenes over and over, sometimes having other cars plough into dramatise the effect a bit more. The crashing is merely a device to show that players have slowed down and need to catch up, and in some ways it adds to the excitement, as it's certainly possible to make a comeback and grab first place after several crashes. The racing AI vehicles are pretty much the same as Burnout, with takedowns providing points and the fast paced earning boost energy to zip past speedier cars. It's all very arcade and easy to get into, but expect a lot of frustration with the constant unfair nudges at crucial points that can cost a race. The biggest gripe with this game is not the lack of variety in the race events, or the overuse of crashing, or aggressive AI. It's the game's novel feature itself which creates a sour taste in the mouth. It's one thing contending with other cars who like to ram you off the track, but when cops are added into the mix, there's a sense that it's the world versus the player. AI cars seem to slip by with relative ease, especially if they have a small lead, and all the focus is on your car, as police and other racers ram you into oblivion with no care for anything. It's frustrating and archaic design, which only rewards the most patient and the lucky. Being at the finish line after a gruelling race only to be nudged into a crash is not fun and just stinks of bad design. What's more frustrating are the cops who don't ever go away. So in case you want to restart a race you just lost, one has to fiddle with the menu in real time and evade the cops at the same time. It's poor design like this which kills the game. A dedicated cop mode would have been much better, or a fairer system with regards to how cops take on other AI races. Better yet, why not use a more realistic cop AI which doesn't rely on murdering innocents just to stop a road car, perhaps even have them give up if the pursuit comes too dangerous. You know, like in real life. In this instance, it's probably very possible to have still kept the game fun whilst maintaining some levels of realism. Another really bad example of the game design is if players hit a spike strip during a race where there are no drive through garages to fix the tyres. The player's vehicle is left crawling at a snail's pace while the opponents race off into the sunset. Sure, there's an option to upgrade cars to reinflate tyres, but this comes at the cost of reducing other attributes. It's simply terribly lazy and only interesting to those who like to punish themselves. 
Need for Speed Most Wanted boasts some neat visuals and flashy intro movies that depict night and day racing, dusk and dawn, even the odd bit of rain to spice things up. It's a nice looking game that provides some decent sense of speed, although a lack of viewpoints is disappointing and the customization is pretty much non-existent. That said, with all the carnage, the game does run pretty smoothly, with only a few instances of the game stuttering from time to time. The game's music is set fairly low in the mix, which is unusual for a fast-paced game featuring a thumping but varied soundtrack. The onus is on listening to the police chatter, which offers insight into their tactical manoeuvres. Coupled with some excellent car sounds and the audio palette becomes a bit full. That said, the police often repeat phrases which does become a bit tiresome after a while, especially if racking up points in the hot pursuit moments. Most Wanted comes with various challenges from players on friends lists, which is neat, but there's an online pass required to join the multiplayer moments on offer, which much like Burnout Paradise, offer a wealth of modes to mess around in. The single player does offer a fair amount to do, as players hop in and out of cars on the fly and earn the points to progress, which does take a while. With lots of other extras to hunt down, there's a solid amount of content on the disc. Need for Speed Most Wanted is a game which players will either love or loathe. The fast pace, the ease of play and the arcade handling all make for a game which on paper works wonders. However, the practice of racing is handled very differently to other games and therefore might not gel so well with purists who would rather race as opposed to battle. There's a lot of potential frustrations which mask themselves as challenge, but in turn highlight a game that really could work more on making a fun game rather than one that looks cool and has poorly realised good ideas. Need for Speed Most Wanted scores 7.5 out of 10. I'm Rob Cram, thanks for watching.